Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Millionaire Real Estate Agent Podcast. I'm Jason Abrams, and this is the place where we lift the curtain on the world of real estate like never before. Every week, I sit down with visionaries, pirates, and mavericks. We're here to document, demonstrate, and most importantly, demystify their game-changing models and systems. What secrets propel them to the top, and how are they living their dreams? This is about passion, it's about strategy, but above all, it's about real, tangible success. So buckle up and let's dive in. This is the Millionaire Real Estate Agent Podcast. You know how I met Jeff Glover? I actually heard and saw about Jeff before I ever met him. And do you know why? Because he and I both grew up in Metro Detroit. When Jeff Glover is 19 years old, he decides to become a real estate agent, gets a license. Friends, what he has done since then is nothing short than legendary. I heard about him the first time on every single radio station in the city of Detroit and saw his name on every single billboard. When I finally met him, I was absolutely not surprised that he is one of the most deep thinking real estate professionals I know. Friends, he runs a team that does a ton of business. He still takes eight to 10 listings every single month. And what he has done with his coaching and education company, Glover U, is nothing short of miraculous. Over the next 40 minutes, you are gonna learn how Jeff closes all of the listings that he takes. If there was a contest for top listing agents in the country, this man would absolutely be in the finals. Buckle up. This is Jeff Glover. Jeff Glover, how are you, sir? Hey, I'm so happy to be here. It's uh, great to be with you in the new year. It is an honor to have you. Now, Jeff, you, it, I grew up in Metro Detroit, just like you did. And so I saw your billboards, your TV commercials, your magical cars, your entire team, and every single house had your name on it. That's how I learned about the Jeff Glover experience. Okay. This show... This show follows around the biggest agents in the country, of which you are one, but no one starts as the biggest agent in the country. Jeff, right. how did you get into the real estate business? Well, I was actually selling furniture for a company you probably are familiar with, Art Van Furniture. They were the, oh, yeah. the biggest in the Midwest, and they were based out of Michigan. And uh, while I was in high school, um, I, I got a job selling furniture. And uh, by the time I turned 18, Somebody in the store said, dude, you, you shouldn't go to college with all your friends. I mean, I, by the way, my senior year of high school, Jason, I made $65,000 as a senior in high school selling furniture on, wow. on 18 hours a week because, you know, they have all the states have the law of how many hours you can work when you're in school. Anyways, somebody in the store said, hey, don't go to college like all your friends. And actually, I was going to do both. I was going to go to college and sell furniture. And instead, I went to community college, still sold furniture, and then got my real estate license because somebody in the store inspired me to get into real estate. That's unbelievable. And did and when you when you get in, you're like everybody else. I took a class. I learned how many square feet are in an acre. Now what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I was 18 years old when I started. So as soon as I turned 18, I got my license. And I was fortunate enough to have a good broker who had good mentors himself. Uh, my first introduction to the business, I was very lucky to meet a gentleman by the name of Floyd Wickman. And uh, Floyd Wickman is a name that most people don't know anymore because he's been retired for several years. But he was like the inventor of the original script and dialogue book. I mean, even before some of the big names you know today. And so my broker handed me a script book and said, look, kid, uh, there's two types of people in this world. Because I was in his office about 40 days in thinking this isn't like selling furniture. In, in furniture, they walk in the store and I just have to select and qualify and close. I was sitting in my broker's office about 40 days in thinking, I, and I told my broker, I'm not going to make it in this business. You know, I'm, I'm 18 years old. I look like I'm 14. I'm still driving my Pontiac Grand Am from high school. My business card had my senior picture on it. And I just kind of felt defeated, like 40 days in, no listings, no sales, nothing happening. And that's when I learned, he said, Jeff, there's two types of people in this world, people you know and people you don't know. Which group is bigger? I said, well, obviously the people I don't know. He said, so we're going to focus on that group. 
And then he took me down the next step, which was, all right, now that we've decided you're going to work with people you don't know, because the people you do know, Jeff, when you're 18 years old, they might not trust you right now. And I totally understand that. But if you work with people you don't know, they don't know who you are. They don't know how long you've been doing this. He said, and you got to make one more decision, kid. I said, what's that? The guy's name was Tim Riley. He ran the Century 21 in town. You got to make one more decision, kid. I'm like, what's that? He said, you have to decide whether you're going to be an employer or an employee in this business. I said, well, what do you mean by that? He said, well, the employers work their butts off Monday through Friday from 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning until 5.30, 6 o'clock at night, going out into the streets, taking listing inventory and putting it on the shelves for all the employees to spend their nights, their weekends, their holidays, their otherwise would-be time with family out showing all the homes of the employers. So which one of those two would you rather be, kid? So, well, based on that, I want to be an employer. He said, good, you're going to be a listing agent. I said, perfect. Where do I start? And that's when he handed me a script book of all the sources of listings and the listing presentation. And I had to write it out. I had to chant it. I had to role play it. That was literally my first 90 days in the business. That's unbelievable. Now, do you start having immediate success? as Once you learned what to say, does it just go gangbusters from there? Yeah. So, so he, I started in the business in June of 2003. And June, July, August, no listings, no sales, no pendings, nothing. So I went through his little program. He made me write out scripts every day for 30 days. I had to take scripts and chant them, put them in front of my face and chant them every day for 30 days. I had to role play every day for 30 days. September of 2003, Jason. Now I had turned 19 by this time because I was you know, 18 when I first started. September of 2003. I was the top listing agent in the office. I took 11 listings in September of 2003, not knowing a single person, just going after complete strangers. And and in order to do that, it wasn't just knowing what to say, because I run into agents all the time and I say, well, look, if you had a listing appointment today, do you think you could walk in and take it? And they say, sure. And I say, well, do you have the appointment? And they say, no. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, you understand that there's two things that are happening. It's knowing what to say, but Jeff, it's also having someone to say it to. How did you solve for not having any appointments? You know, he taught me to go after the low hanging fruit and basically the low hanging fruit on the listing side, the business is for sale by owners and expireds because, you know, if you take an expired, for instance, which is where I started, they've raised their hand and said, we'll pay a commission. They've raised their hand and said, we'll sign a contract. They've raised their hand and said, you can put a sign in our yard. We've ra- they've raised their hand and said, you can put a lockbox on our door. They are the lowest hanging fruit. And that's what I went after. And then after that, I once I mastered expires, then I went into for sale by owners and, you know, they same thing. They've raised their hand too and said, we're going to be selling. It's just a matter of overcoming you know, the objections of commission or whatever. You know, Gary Keller and Jay Papazan, and if you're new to the program, by the way, if you're new to the show, the the namesake of this show is The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. That's a book that Gary, uh, Dave Jenks, and Jay wrote. And the idea was this triangle that it begins with leads, which is what Jeff just talks about. Those become listings because that's what you want to have. And then you ultimately get to bring leverage into your life because the real estate agent with the most listings has every other agent in town working for them. So Jeff, if I'm able to get there emotionally, having listings is really the name of the game. Would you agree? Listing agents have always controlled the commission. Listing agents have always controlled the market. Listing agents have always controlled the inventory. I'm just going to be a better listing agent. I'm going to double down on sellers once again. So if I make the decision right now, and by the way, I don't care if you're selling 2,000 homes a year or if you're selling two homes a year, everyone can make the decision right now. I'm going to be the best listing agent that I'm going to be. I'm going to hit my maximum potential. I got to do two things, Jeff. Number one, I got to get appointments. And then number two, I need to actually be able to close on listings. Teach us how to do it, my friend. Well, listen, and I want to say one thing on that. People tend to underestimate. And and I I think, you know, kind of to your point of there's two parts to it. You know, uh, I know what to say when I get an opportunity, but I need the opportunity. Well, what I have found, Jason, in, in my, you know, early years of coaching and training is that there's really three parts to listing property. There's the generating the lead, there's the presentation, and there's the closing for the listing, whether it's at the table or after the appointment. And so, so many people focus on the first part, which is generating the lead, where what I have found is if you know your presentation is dialed in, you've got the the best materials, the best dialogue, you can handle any objection they give you. If you know that your presentation is the best thing since sliced bread, Guess what ends up happening? 
You have the motivation, you have the energy, you have the know-how, you're going to go out and find people to present to. And so a lot of agents do it backwards where they, and don't get me wrong, I mean, yes, you have to have a lead to go on an appointment, but they spend way too much time focusing on generating the lead and not enough time actually getting better at their presentation, which in turn is going to give them the confidence, the energy, the know-how to go and find listing business. So I think it's important that I, I put that out there because that that's how I learned it. That's how I mastered it. I got actually good at my presentation first. And then that gave me the confidence to go out and generate and have seller-based conversations. And I had no problem. They could throw at me whatever they want. I had a handler for everything. I love that. And y'all listening to the show don't know it, but in the last 90 days, Jeff's taken 227 listings. Now he did it with 28 agents. And by the way, him himself goes out and takes six to 10 listings on a monthly basis. So what you're hearing right now isn't listing theory. What you're hearing is some of the best listing practice available in the business. This is a first. This uh, for usually when I cut in, I interrupt what they're saying or what one of my guests on this show has shared, and I'm dotting the I or crossing the T. I am interrupting myself right now, and I'm doing that because I want you to stop whatever you're doing right now. And here's why: Jeff Glover is about to spend the next give or take 25 minutes on a tear as he goes from the absolute beginning of how to take these listings through how to make sure they get closed. He is about to share absolute wisdom with you. And I don't interrupt him. I'm not going to stop him because he hits a flow that I have had very few guests on this show ever hit. He is about to teach, preach. Teach, preach is different. Teach is one thing, preach is one thing. Teach, preach is this. He is so wildly passionate about your success that he is about to give you every secret he has. So stop what you're doing, pull over to the side of the road, get out a piece of paper and a pen, and you are about to get it. Now, if you don't get all these notes, don't worry. We've made a one-pager on this. It gets emailed out to you every month. Listen to what he's about to say in a calm way so that you can absorb all of it because Jeff Glover is about to teach, preach, pure listing gold. Jeff, walk me through the presentation. Yeah. How do I start closing every listing I'm going on? That's great. So something that I followed from day one, of course, I've tweaked it through the years. And what I'm following today uh, is five, what I call five steps to a great listing appointment, five steps to a great listing appointment. And within each these, each step, there's multiple steps. So it's really going to, you're probably going to write down like 20 different things, but so be prepared to take a lot of notes on this portion. But step one is content creation. Step one is content creation. And so content is really the core of your listing appointment. So what, what should your content include? There's actually one, two, three, four, five, six things that are included in your content. All right. So we'll call this one A. So one A is first thing, content that communicates your value, meaning you personally, what makes you unique? What's different about you? Back when I started, Jason, my content on this one was I'm the hardest working agent in town. In fact, I would actually ask them, oh, you're meeting with Jason Abrams tomorrow. Go ahead and ask Jason for a copy of his schedule. Here's a copy of mine, by the way. I would prove so that that was my that was my uh, that was my value outside of my plan of action. I'm not talking about what you're going to do to market their house. You know, then it became marketing. You know, of course, you mentioned in the beginning billboards and radio. You know, our 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 my value was uh, being known in the market through our mass media, right? So you got to have something unique that you provide that's different. And and even if you're like Jeff, I don't have a big marketing budget. I don't have this. Find something, whether it's you know, you're fully ingrained in your community or you're fully ingrained in, in the school system. Or you're fully ingrained in, in, a, in a nonprofit or for me, it was my work ethic. That actually was the value that I would present to a seller when I'm on an appointment, when they would ask me the question, because everyone's heard this before, Jason, you've heard this. What is one thing that makes you different than everyone else we're meeting with this weekend, Jeff? My answer in the early days, my answer, without question, I'll outwork any one of these agents you're interviewing and I can prove it. Here's a copy of my schedule and I would encourage you to ask them for a copy of theirs. That was my one-liner and that that got me listings that alone. 
So good. Okay, so I got to have something that communicates my unique value. Communicates my value. Yep. So that's one A. Yep. And your unique value. Again, we're not talking your marketing plan. I'll get to that. One B is your listing plan of action. One B is your listing plan of action. And if I can make a recommendation, I want you to focus on promotional and institutional marketing. So promotional marketing is everything you're going to do to promote their home. Institutional marketing is everything that you, your team, your company in terms of, in this case, Keller Williams, everything that you and your team and your company are doing to promote your brand. So as a, for instance, uh, I'll just use my example. Um, Institutional advertising would be me be like putting up billboards around Metro Detroit. Never did I put a picture of a listing that I had, you know, that I was trying to promote on the billboard. But what I would do is I would prove to the consumers that the institutional advertising, by the way, social media is institutional advertising. Your brand on social media is your institutional side. So I would point out all the things that we do on the institutional side. And I say would, I still do. I point out all the things we do on the, I was just thinking of the mass advertising side of it. We don't do as much mass advertising today, which is nice. You can make a big splash and you can start to manage your expenses a little better. Anyways, You point out everything you do on the institutional side on how you promote yourself and what that means to them. Because, of course, they're wondering, well, Jeff and Jason, I'm sure you would would say if you're on a listing appointment, you're competing against me. You'd say, well, Jeff just promotes himself on the billboard. I don't know how that's going to help you, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. And I would be on the listing appointment and say, well, of course, you guys have seen our ads and you don't see houses on the billboard. So you might be wondering, how does that benefit you as a seller? And I would talk about consumer awareness. And consumers, when they would see our ads or they would see your listing or they, they, they see our reviews on Zillow and then they put two and two together because they've seen our billboards or, you know, if you're heavy on social media, they've seen us on social media, right? So you got to be able to explain your institutional advertising plan, what you do to insti- advertise your institution, your team, yourself personally, uh, your brokerage, all right? The second side of that is your promotional side. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because every market's different and most of you have this, but this is... If a seller were to say, okay, what are you going to do specifically to sell my home? You know, this is like your open house plan. This is like, you know, your, your sign call capture system. Uh, this is your, your video team coming in and promote, you know, and videoing their house. You got to have institutional, what you do to promote your brand. And you got to have promotional, what you do to promote their house. And that's one B under marketing plan. One C is your pricing strategy. One C is the pricing strategy. In other words, your, your CMA presentation. And Jason, it's one thing to know the market. It's another thing to be able to articulate the presentation. 1D is your visuals. Visuals matter. I tell our agents all the time in our coaching, you can't say something uh, profound without having a visual to back it up. If you want to make a massive statement, you know, hey, the market's doing this and here's why I think you should do this. I don't believe you as a seller until you show me in proof. So you got to have some strong visuals. Uh, Next one E is proof. Proof. Show me examples of other people that you've helped. This can be testimonials. Uh, You know, this can be, this can be reviews. I got to, I got to see proof. And then one F would be you, Y-O-U, content creation. One F is you, Y-O-U, how you show up matters. All things being considered, and I get it, some markets are different. You know, if you're selling in Phoenix, Arizona, it might be common to show up in a polo and you're not wearing a suit and tie, you know, all buttoned up. I understand that. Some things are going to be different per market, but at the end of the day, your energy, your enthusiasm. I'll never forget, Jason, you probably remember there was an old trainer back in the day that would say, I don't care if you show up to a listing appointment and vomit all over their kitchen table. If you do it with energy and enthusiasm, you have a better chance of getting the listing than the guy that doesn't have energy and enthusiasm. <laughs> All right. I don't recommend yes. vomiting at, at the listing appointment, by the way. <laughs> so that's number one. Number two, five-step listing process. Number two is practice. So once you've put all of your content together, now I got to practice delivering it. And my practice, as you heard early on, take, the, take your listing script and dialogue And I want you to write it out once a day for 30 days. I want you to chant it once a day for 30 days. I want you to role play it once a day for 30 days. This is no different than what I was, what I did. Uh, You know, I I remember my broker, I was like, well, who do I role play with? 
He's like, Jeff, just go around the hall. You're going to find people around the office that know what role play means. And, you know, this worked out really well for my first week, Jason. And then I would, I would go through the office at a certain time because I, I was pretty scheduled with my time. And I'd walk down the hall and I'd see doors start closing. People would pick up their phone and act like they're on the phone. Nobody wanted to role play with me. So I ended up role playing with my broker a lot. But number two in the five step is practice. And listen, I know it's 2024. You're thinking, well, I got AI. I got social media. I got video. I don't need to practice. I mean, come on. I don't need to be a scripted salesperson. At the end of the day, as long as there's a listing presentation and a buyer consultation, people are going to make a decision of who they're hiring based on how you make them feel. Period. I don't care if you're number one or number two or number 10 or number 30. People are going to make a decision on who they're hiring based on how you make them feel. Well, how do you make someone feel a certain way, Jason? What comes out of your mouth is, is what causes someone to feel a certain way, a certain emotion. And what comes out of your mouth should be a dialogue or, or a word track that you're following. And that's number two, practice. Number three, delivery. Number three is delivery. I want you to pay attention to your rate of speech. I want you to pay attention to your tonality, right? If they're talking fast, you talk fast. If they're talking slower, you slow down. If they're talking loud, you be loud with them. If they're talking quiet, you be quiet with them. I actually have four different versions. People freak out when I say this from the stage at our events, Jason. I actually have four different listening presentations. True story. Now, here's the good news. The script is the same for each one. It's just I show up as a different person. I have four different styles of showing up. I can show up as the aggressive, the motivated, the loud, the yeah guy, or I can absolutely tone it down and ask a lot of questions about their plans and their goals and what's important to them and and finding the next buyer for the home and what they're looking for in a buyer and who they would love to, to, to pass the keys over to. I can, you can change your rate of speech, your tonality, your volume, your body language. Number three, delivery is all about mirroring and matching. Number four, pre-qualification. Number four is pre-qualification. In other words, uh, you're, you're asking a series of questions prior to going to the appointment. Gosh, this, this is so, this is one of the most valuable parts of the listing process, in my opinion, because it naturally causes you to build more rapport than the other guys and gals that are going out blind. You, you see, most of your competitors, they go on an appointment. You know, somebody says they'll meet with them today at five o'clock. They just go. <laughs> they just show up and then they hope they get the listing. I've got a series of things that is taking place before I get there. In fact, a seller will hear from me, Jason, from the time I set the appointment, so long as it's 24 to 48 hours out. I mean, if it's the same day, I can't, I can't do this. But so long as it's 24 to 48 hours out, a seller will hear from me five times before I show up. Five times. They're going to get a text after the call thanking them for setting an appointment with me. They're going to get a thank you card in the mail, which is going to show up either a day before the appointment, the day of the appointment, or day after the appointment. They're going to get a call back from me where I'm going to ask them a series of questions. It's a pre-qual. They're going to get an email from me letting them know I'm working on their listing appointment and I have a few questions before I come out. They're going to get a text message in the morning letting them know I'm so excited to meet with them today. I have found that the more times you can touch an appointment before showing up, the greater chance you're going to get that listing signed because there's a little, there's a little um, ratio that's out there that has been dropping through the years. And I've, I've heard this through the years and from agents from Gary's mastermind, Hey Jeff, you know, are, are you seeing that, you know, less appointments are being held right now? Yeah. That's been a real common thing over the last several years. Well, how do we overcome that? You just have to have more, more touches to them from the time you set the appointment to the time you go out. So step number four in the five steps is the pre-qualifying process. And that's a series of questions, all right? You know, you can get the, you know, there's plenty of scripts out there, whether you find ours or every different system has a different pre-qualification script out there. And then finally, number five is your actual pre-appointment package. Number five is your pre-appointment package. So what is this? This is a physical package that's being FedExed. It's being mailed to them. It's showing up at their front door. Well, what do I put in this physical package? Well, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things that go in the physical package. I'll rattle through them very quickly because I know we're probably pressed for time. Pre-appointment package. The first thing is a cover letter explaining what's going to happen on the appointment. Hey, thanks for taking my call or thanks for setting an appointment with me. I look forward to seeing you next week, Tuesday at three o'clock. It's a cover letter. Pretty simple. Next, I'm going to have a copy of my references and reviews. Here's what other people had to say about their experience with me. 
Well, Jeff, where do I get those? You just go to Zillow or Google or wherever people are leaving reviews for you and copy and paste them and put them on a document. I mean, after you have a ton of reviews, I mean, it's going to be a thick package. They're going to go through three or four pages and say, okay, we get it. This guy is good at what he does. References and reviews. If you're brand new and you don't have reviews, you're going to use references. References from people that, you know, previous supervisors, previous, previous managers, you know, you'll be in great hands, you know, working with this guy or gal. Next, your plan of action, your listing plan of action, what you're going to do to sell their house. And that can have a mix, as I recommended, of institutional and promotional uh, advertising, meaning what you do to promote yourself, what you do to promote yourself on social media, what you do to promote your team, your brand, your, your company, your, your Keller Williams, uh, promotional, uh, that's institutional. And the promotional is what you're going to do to sell their house. Next, you should have three to five actives and three to five solds. So you could write down just simple market analysis if you want. But what I call a simple market analysis is just three to five actives, three to five solds. I don't want to give them the whole thing. Number one, that, that gives me less of a reason to go over it when I get there. But number two, uh, it's, it's confusing to them. I just want to give them an idea because when I'm going through the prequal, I want them to say something like, hey, Jeff, we saw the comps you sent. And, um, you know, if you're thinking this thing's going to be like 350, you know, don't bother coming out. And then I can have a discussion with them about that before I even show up. So three to five actives, three to five sold. Next, we're going to include what's called the what happens next book. All right, a what happens next book. And that is making the seller feel comfortable. Once they sign with me, what are the next steps? What's step one? What's step two? What's step three? What's step four? How does showings work? How does feedback work? That's called the what happens next book. Next in my pre-appointment package, proof. If there's other homes that I've sold similar to theirs, I'm going to include those in this package. And now you might be saying, well, Jeff, can I, I'm newer or maybe I haven't sold as many. Great. Use your office. Use your teams. You're going to find you're going to find sales within your office that are in their price range. It doesn't always have to be in their neighborhood. I like to focus on price range because that's what it is. You know, if you've got a million dollar opportunity and you send them proof of a bunch of two, three hundred thousand dollar houses you've sold, forget it. You're, you're, you don't got a shot at this. I mean, you have a shot, but it's going to hurt your chances. So if, if I'm going on a million dollar appointment, I'm going to show them sales of a million dollars that either me, our team, or our brokerage have been involved in. And then the last thing I'm going to include is a copy of our seller's disclosure statements because in my cover letter, it's going to say, hey, please kindly, I've included a copy of the state disclosure statements. Please fill these out and have these ready prior to our appointment. And that's really just a time saver thing. I mean, it does, it does kind of help me with pricing the home as well, but most people don't fill it out prior to getting there. That's okay. I just kind of want to set the, set the tone that when I come out, we're listing your home. And I, that's kind of what I think that document does. It kind of just sets the tone that, you know, he means business. He thinks he's going to get in, getting our listing when he comes out. So we'll see what he has to say first. And that's okay. And every now and again, I'll get there and say, yeah, 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 we got these all ready for you. By the way, uh, a little veteran's tip here, when they have the seller's disclosure statements filled out on their kitchen table and you can see them before you even started talking, you got that listing. So don't blow it. <laughs> don't talk too much. You got that listing, all right? It's very rare that I've had a seller have their seller's disclosure statement filled out and, and then not get the listing. Jeff, this is so good, man. As I'm sitting back and I'm listening to you, you're not just a student of the game. You're mastering sections of the game that you think matter most. And, and they're the words that we say, and then there's the way that you present. And it feels like to me, and if I've got it wrong, say, no, Jason, you missed it. But it feels like to me in your pyramid of priorities, how you speak, how you show up, and then how you're perceived by the consumer seems to be the three most important things in your world. I would agree with that. Yeah. And, you know, in a, at a lot of our events, I teach your presentation is not just what you're doing at the kitchen table. Your presentation is what they see online, what they see on social media. Because, Jason, uh, back in the day, you, you remember this. You would go on a listing appointment. And here's, you know, 10 years ago, watch what would happen. You'd go on a listing appointment. You'd leave their house. Or, and they'd finish all their appointments and then they'd ask around, you know, they'd call their friend, Bob, who's an attorney. They'd, they'd, they'd be taking the trash out and, you know, you know, nosy, nosy net across the street would say, Hey, it looks like you're getting ready to list your house. Or, yeah. We're thinking about ABC real estate company. What do you think? They do all this asking around and to, 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 to validate who they should go with. That was 10 years ago, five years ago. Finally, they could see a little bit on social media. Finally, they could check out your Zillow reviews. Finally, they could see what people said about you on Facebook. But here's the key. After you left their house today, 
People are Googling, researching, Facebooking, Instagramming, all of that before you even get there. So today, uh, you know, you, you're, you have to be just as mindful of what you present at the kitchen table as what's presented online on social media before you show up. I think it's genius. I, I think all of this is genius. And if you're out there right now and you want to take more listings, I literally think he just gave you not only the prescription, but the antidote on how to do it, which kind of leads me, Jeff, take a minute here. I'm a huge fan of Glover U, which is your your coaching and education company. I'm actually a student of yours. I've been to a bunch of the events and I've sat in the audience and take notes. Why did you start Glover U? Well, I mean, when you give something your name, it, it means something. Why, why did you yeah. do this? Uh, well, I would say two, two things. Uh, number one, I learned early on, it was 2005, I got the opportunity to run a real estate office. And a lady by the name of Kathy Schweitzer took a chance on me to run an office in a suburb of Detroit called Livonia, Michigan. And uh, I saw the training that they wanted me to teach. You know, no disrespect to Cobalt Banker, this was the company I was with, I mean, but I saw the training and I thought there's no way this is actually going to teach agents how to become top producers. There's no way that this, you know, hold one open house per month. Make sure you send letters to everyone in your database when you get into this. No, this is this is going to produce a bunch of low producers. And I just kind of went against the grain and said, you know what? If I ever get the chance, I'm going to be the guy that tells the truth about what it's going to take to succeed in real estate. And from there, I just, I found my passion with speaking and training and, and I've just kind of been that. I've went against the grain a little bit, you know, without being too, too edgy, without crossing too many people, uh, by just telling the truth of here's actually what it's going to take to succeed in real estate. And, um, you know, I, I believe that, you know, I've only been able to impact, you know, maybe a few hundred thousand at this point. There's millions in the industry and it's my mission to impact millions to live their most unreal life. And, and I got a lot of work to do. I love it. Well, on behalf of a very grateful industry and as a huge fan of what you're doing, I'm giving it the Jason Abrams, two thumbs up and the highest recommendation I can. I love what you're doing, Jeff. I really do. All right, sir. We would like to invite you to the lightning round. Now, if you have are new to the show, this is when we ask you a series of very important questions in fast succession. We want the first thing that comes to your mind. Jeff, will you enter the lightning round? Let's do it. Jeff, what is your favorite color? Blue. What is your favorite food? Pizza. Stop the lightning round. Dude, me too. And I just want to know, are we talking Detroit style? Are we going to Buddy's or are you going for a round pizza? What is the best pizza? I, actually, I, I like Jets. I, I like the deep dish square pizza. I like Jets. You can't go wrong, by the way, if the Jets... We grew up all these years with, with how did Detroit become the pizza capital of the country? I mean, if you name Little Caesars, Hungry Howie's, Jets, Domino's, they all started here. It's kind of crazy. That's 100% right. And by the way, if you're a Jets franchiser, thank you for coming to Austin. You now have three locations. Oh, nice. If you could just come to Lakeway, oh, yeah. we would appreciate it. Okay, back into the lightning round. Yep. Jeff, what's your favorite sound? My favorite sound? Uh, I, I yeah. would say the sound of thunder and rain. Love that. Jeff, what's your favorite sports team? The Detroit Lions. Welcome to the playoffs. <laughs> yes. Jeff, is there a book, and it doesn't have to be the newest one, is there one book that you think everyone in this audience would benefit from if they read? How to Win Friends and Influence People. Jeff, other than this one, because I know and thank you for your support of the show. Mm -hmm. I know you listen to every podcast here. What's the podcast that you are listening to? Not yours, but what's the voice in your head when you go looking for content? Uh, anything by John Maxwell. I also like listening to Ed Milet. It's fantastic. As, as you know, by the way, Ed's a, 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 a friend of the program. We've had him at our events. You've had him at yours. Yeah. If you haven't listened to his or read the book, One More, I would tell everybody to do it. That's a life changer. Yeah, I think. it's a great, it's a great, that, that whole message is great. Jeff, favorite place to vacation? I love uh, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, Florida. There it is. Friends, that is the lightning round. That is Jeff Glover, a friend to all real estate agents from all brands. Jeff, again, Thank you for everything you're doing for the industry. You bet. Thanks for having me on, Jason. Well, there it is. I, look, I didn't tell you that it was going to be easy. I certainly didn't tell you that it was going to be simple. I did tell you that he's a Jedi and he knew exactly what he was talking about. You can go down sequentially through each one of the steps that Jeff just laid out and truly understand why it begins with knowing your value. He said every single agent needs to know their unique value. 
Then he said, once you have it, you got to get that collateral together. You have to be able to demonstrate this value in some sort of entertaining way. And once you have that down, you need to practice it. Did you listen when he said that for 90 days, now he said 30, I stretch it to 90 because here's what I know. If you do it for three months, you won't be sorry. You have to write your listing presentation down. You have to chant it. And then every single day you have to role play it. I promise you, if you did that, you would absolutely become a listing guru. Then this idea of mirroring and matching the people that you're talking to, asking for the business, he doesn't walk into a listing presentation and get what you get. You see, Jeff isn't running a maybe business. Jeff is running a business of absolutes. He is absolute steadfast in the way that he's going to operate. He is going to check off on his list every single time to make sure that every customer gets the exact same experience. He thinks deeply about the real estate business. But you know what takes me most about Jeff Glover? He had no problem just now sharing his entire listing playbook with you. He didn't keep anything hidden. He gave you the straight answers. He isn't worried in the least about giving unabashedly to the industry that he loves. Jeff Glover, he is a credit to the entire industry, and he inspires me. You just heard it. There is no reason not to go out and take action. Friends, that was Jeff Glover. And there it is. That wraps another episode. Friends, I don't know what you're taking out of this. I really don't. I'll tell you what I want you to be taking out of it, which is these are the people that are having tremendously big lives. And the reason it's happening is because they're setting up the models and systems to do just that. Gary Keller told me that leadership is teaching people how to think so that they do the things they need to do when they need to do them so that ultimately they get the things they want when they want to have them. And that's what I want for you. You're all leaders, but it begins with leading ourselves. If you're enjoying this podcast, I want you to click the subscribe button anywhere that you get your podcasts. We want to be the voice in your head every single week. And every week we're dropping new content. We also send out a newsletter at the conclusion of every show to make sure that you get the highest points and the models and systems that were discussed. So if you want to sign up, I need your name and your email address. Head over to the millionaireagentpodcast.com millionaireagentpodcast.com enter your name and your email address and every week that newsletter will be in your box friends you just went on a journey i hope that what happens between now and the next time we meet is absolutely wonderful for you thanks for listening i'll see you next week this podcast is for general informational purposes only the views thoughts and opinions of the guest represent those of the guest and not KWRI and its affiliates, and should not be construed as financial, economic, legal, tax, or other advice. This podcast is provided without any warranty or guarantee of its accuracy, completeness, timeliness, or results from using the information.